Today's episode of the podcast is brought to you by Four Sigmatic. Four Sigmatic was founded with the goal of cutting through all the hype and helping people eat more of the world's most scientifically studied superfoods like mushrooms. I absolutely love this stuff. They sent me over a box of uh, a lot of their mushroom products and I was a little skeptical at first, but after using them, I've really come to like them. They taste awesome. They're super convenient. They come in 10 little packets packets in each pack and mushrooms have an adaptogenic property it's really cool helps restore your hormones balance your energy naturally and feel awesome all right so head on over to foursigmatic.com that's f-o-u-r-s-i-g-m-a-t-i-c use the code word paleohacks at checkout and you save 15 percent off all purchases paleo hackers welcome back happy thursday My guest is Wendy Myers. She is a functional diagnostic nutritionist and health coach based in Los Angeles, California. Her blog is live210.com. And today, to talk about detoxification, increasing your energy, and heavy metal. Wendy, thanks for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. Really excited about this one. Uh, You know, energy seems to be everywhere. Um, A lot of. I mean, the energy market's huge, and and five hour energies are everywhere, and uh, different detox programs. So it's going to be fun to dive into some of that stuff. Yeah. Um. So starting off, how did you get into you know living to one ten and and the blog and all that? What was your story? Were you always Mrs. Healthy, uh, live to one hundred and ten, or was there sort of a journey there? Uh, definitely not. I used to do fast food, and you know, just uh, really was. Living not the most enviable lifestyle, but when my father was diagnosed with cancer, with esophageal cancer, um, it really uh, scared me straight um, because he had a pretty, you know, excruciating death and uh, illness. And so that really uh, got me studying uh, cancer. I'd always kind of studied health and weight loss and things like that. But uh, once he was diagnosed, I really got into studying uh, the underlying causes of cancer and and also why everyone is so sick. Why is everyone so tired on medications and why isn't medicine helping? And uh, I had a lot of questions and was frustrated. And and I started publishing my research on my website. I started it on uh, re- live to 110com and developed a detox program called mineralpower.com where uh, you know, I, I developed a detox program um, because uh, my unfortunately my father passed within about six months of his diagnosis. Uh, but since then, I've for my own health, I've been you know just learning how to detox and eat right and live a healthy lifestyle that all facilitates uh, detoxification. Okay, um, and so I guess to answer your own question, why is everyone so tired? Why is that such a common theme we see in today's world? Well, a lot of people are, you know, just fine that they're doing everything right. Like at one point I was eating right and I was exercising and I was sleeping every night and I was taking all the right supplements and I was still tired. I thought, what what the heck do I have to do to feel good? And so what I, in my research, I found that there are certain toxic metals that, uh, namely arsenic, aluminum, tin, and thallium, that poison enzymes that transport nutrients into your mitochondria. And those are little cells powerhouses that make your energy. So most people have one or even all of the above. And that is going to drastically reduce your body's ability to make energy. So it doesn't matter how much mitochondria support supplements you take or five hour energy or a coffee you drink all day long. If you have any of these toxic metals, you are not going to be able to produce the energy that your body is capable of. So kind of like we've talked about on the show dozens of times with gut health, you know, you're not what you eat, you're what you eat and absorb. And if you're not absorbing it, it really doesn't matter. Organic, schmorganic, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. And that relates to very good point because that relates to, uh, the, uh, you know, if you have reduced energy, you're going to have reduced ability to absorb nutrients, specifically protein. So a lot of your listeners eating all these beautiful, expensive proteins, but if you are fatigued, if you have chronic fatigue or reduced energy, the, uh, amino acid transport proteins that take your protein amino acids and transport it into your gut, into your cells, they require a tremendous amount of energy. 
energy. And if you have any of these metal toxicities, you are going to have a reduced ability to transport those proteins. Those proteins are the first to go when you have reduced energy. So I find a lot of my clients uh, in you know their hair mineral analysis testing or via 24-hour amino acids or organic acids testing, they are not absorbing their amino acids. And they have very expensive poop as a result um, because, you know, because of reduced energy. So very important to detox for a number of reasons. So with uh, absorbing um, nutrients or minerals for the mitochondria and producing that energy, um, kind of what I'm hearing then is what gets in the way are these heavy metals and (laughs) other things. Um, So can you talk a little bit to set it up before we get into how and kind of what it is? Um, Well, I guess how they block the energy production in there, how these heavy metals are affecting us. Yeah, well, it gets a a little bit complicated, but let me talk a little bit about uh, the the specific metals that do block energy production. So the first one is aluminum. Uh, This is found in vaccines. It's a um, it's found in so many things. It's used by municipal water sources to cause sediment to sink to the bottom, so it'll be in tap water. It's used as a drying and anti-caking agent in flour and salt. So your salt shaker is probably going to have aluminum in it. Vaccines. Uh, they used to use mercury. They still do in some, but now the adjuvant is aluminum that irritates the immune system to get it to produce antibodies. So hopefully none of you are doing vaccines at this point. <laughs> so with the t- Tap water, why do they put it in there? Is it to purify it? No, it causes sediment to sink to the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's why they use that. Okay. So, um, yeah. So, uh, aluminum? Yeah, a deodorant, of course. Even natural ones can have it, like the crystal um, soda can. So, I can go on and on. Um, so, the, it's also a, a neurotoxin, etc. But, it, like I said, it, that poisons enzymes so that, uh, that, you know, transport nutrients into your mitochondria. Uh, the next one is arsenic. This is found in conventional chickens. Uh, even if now today you're eating pastured chickens, organic chickens, if at any time you had an, like, an El Pollo Loco habit or you are eating regular chickens, you probably have arsenic because the uh, antibiotic that's used to treat them contains arsenic. This antibiotic makes them grow much faster. Mm. Um, also going to be found in tap water, well water, um, our rice products and uh, pesticides as well. The most, you know, there's definitely more sources. Those are the most common. Uh, the next metal that reduces your ability to make energy is tin. So tin is found uh, primarily in canned foods. It's also found in uh, mercury amalgam fillings. So if you've ever had a mercury amalgam filling at any one time, it's an amalgam. So it's going to have tin, aluminum, uh, palladium, silver, uh, lots of toxic metals. Um, yeah. So, so what I'm hearing is they're like everywhere and people have been exposed to them in either chicken or mercury amalgam fillings or their mm-hmm. water. And it's not something that y- you just acquire once and then it's with you. It can happen over time. Um, and so a lot of people are, are struggling with heavy metals, you think, and according to your research, it's a pretty common problem. Yeah, I mean, I believe everyone has toxic metals. And, uh, you know, the CDC has established we have 500 chemicals on average in a report they do every five years. So toxicity is a huge problem. Um, even if you're living a very, very healthy lifestyle, if you're not quite feeling as good as you should, um, that's why. And yeah. So what would someone be feeling if they had um, is heavy metal poisoning? Is that what you would classify it as? Yeah, it's just chronic low grade toxic metal toxicity, uh, for instance. Um, it's just something that you may not have an acute toxicity that requires emergency chelation or whatnot, where you require to go to hospital and it's life threatening. This is just this low grade chronic exposure, daily exposure, and it just builds up in your body. And our bodies eventually become so overburdened that we're no longer able to detox. Uh, the body really will have trouble detoxing, especially if someone has one or multiple health conditions or uh, different health conditions like methylation issues or their kidneys don't work so great or liver doesn't work so great, what have you, or if they smoke. 
definitely going to have a reduced ability to detox. Um, so a number of factors uh, play into it. But as our bodies become more and more toxic, um, we have a reduced ability, ironically, to detox. So I'm a big fan of really helping to facilitate the body to, to detox. Sure. And, and so someone who is... Um suffering from a heavy metal poisoning or toxicity mm-hmm. it's lower energy levels is what i'm hearing maybe weight gain as well uh, oh yeah yeah definitely weight gain arsenic is a big one in that because it poisons enzymes that transport triglycerides out of your fat cells so that's a big one if you're doing everything right and you still yeah. lose weight um brain fog very very common nothing the doctor is going to do about that for you yeah um except throw you some thyroid meds or antidepressants um like like i said the uh reduced energy um just general malaise like the mild low-grade depression where like nickel toxicity can cause that um when people are um nauseated you know i have a lot of clients that just have intermittent nausea i had that for sure and um, just uh, any type of problem, adrenal fatigue, thyroid dysfunction, gut issue, um, I mean, you name it. Uh, there's a toxic metal underlying every single health condition that I've researched. Okay. And so you said this isn't something that the typical uh, general practitioner would test for. Um, how how would you test for it? Is there a way you can know for sure that you're suffering from a heavy metal condition? Yeah, well, I like to begin with my clients with a hair mineral analysis. Um, there's no test that's perfect. I mean, a hair mineral analysis will show three months of what's depositing into your hair. Um, some people don't do that very well for genetic reasons. Other people are just so toxic, they just can't detox anything. So they, they might not have anything on the hair mineral analysis. Mm-hmm. So in that case, I like to run uh, more testing, doing a urine metals analysis, uh, using chelators or substances that grab onto metals. Um, even a fecal metals test because different metals uh, exit the body in different ways. And so doing a full battery of tests is the best way to assess someone's body burden of toxic metals. But like I said, I like to begin with a hair mineral analysis. Okay. And and do you have any uh, stories off the top of your head of a before and after, even with yourself or with clients you've worked with of like kind of what were they going through? What were they feeling? And then you worked with them and they did some stuff. And then what was the after like? Well, you know, I definitely have had clients with Hashimoto's and that's, you know, really cleared up within about a year. I've had clients uh, that were bedridden, uh, that were not able to function or work, that finally were able to, after a couple of years of detoxing, Mm -hmm. were able to have a life again and begin working again. Um, I've had clients that, um, you know, just have really bad brain fog. Like myself, I had such bad brain fog about four or five years ago and that has totally cleared up. I mean, my brain were, it's just on fire and I, I never thought I'd be able to like function as highly as I am now. Hmm. Um, uh, there's, there's just so many instances of clients and their health conditions getting better. Even like my business partner had really bad diabetes and her blood sugar was in like the three hundreds. Now she's down in like the one fifties, hmm. um, dramatic improvement, a lot of different metals, uh, that promote diabetes. Arsenic is one of them. Um, uranium, all my clients have uranium toxicity, all have diabetes. Hmm. So uh, that's a big one in interfering in blood sugar control. Um, but just a, a lot of different stories. It doesn't matter what the health condition is. When you detox your body, people are typically going to see an improvement, if not a reversal of the health condition. Okay. Um, I really want to come back to the brain fog in, in, in a little bit, um, but I guess, I guess to set it up some more for people listening, how does our detoxification pathways get thrown out? Um, you mentioned the tap water and all these exposures to chicken and all that, but is there anything else that kind of clogs it up or does it just accumulate over time? Well, one of the things that many people have suffer from is mineral deficiency. Uh, we have to have minerals for our body to work, for our detox pathways to work, for our enzymes to work so that the body can function. Um, and one of the problems is the soils are deficient. Even if you're eating a beautiful organic diet and getting everything from the farmer's market, et cetera, the soils are deficient. There's no financial incentive for even organic farmers to mineralize the soil. And so that used to be done with wood ash, with cow manure and things like that. It's not done anymore um, unless it's like a biodynamic organic product, which is pretty rare to find. Or like Joel Salton's farm. Yeah, he, exactly. He, yeah, he was on here talking about what he does to the topsoil and 
The dude's crazy uh, into it. He's 100% like the best you can do. He's doing it. Oh, yeah. And and that's just like not most farmers, you know, where most people are getting their food. And so the food is deficient. And so you have to mineralize your body. You have to take supplements for life. And a lot of people are not focusing on mineralization, what, you know, magnesium being the most important one, uh, the most common deficiency that I find in my client population. Huh. So uh, you have to have minerals like copper for your DNA to copy properly uh-huh. um, for just everything to work. And when clients begin taking minerals in the amounts that they need in the correct forms, because a lot of people aren't making that distinction, like, oh, I'm taking magnesium, but they're not taking the right kind. They're not taking nearly enough that they need. So once people begin doing that, their body just starts working. They're more relaxed and calm. They start sleeping better and their bodies begin working. And these minerals help to push out toxic metals. Uh, They're very, very effective at being uh, an important component in detoxification. So remineralizing yourself. This is fascinating. We've never really talked about this on the show. Um, So you mentioned... Uh, well, actually, before we're getting into supplements and kind of what to do, what about people who eat a really, really high quality diet, you know, mm-hmm. organic, clean? Is is that not, not enough to detox themselves? Um, or, or what you're saying, maybe what I'm hearing is that these detoxification pathways get so built up, we can no longer, we're no longer capable of naturally detoxing ourselves or there's a question in there somewhere yeah. about the healthy. <laughs> no, organic. I totally understand. Okay. <laughs> no, I think uh, what you're saying is that, you know, even if people eat an amazing diet, um, unless they're growing their own vegetables and they're a master gardener, like my uncle, who's been gardening for 30 years, I mean, he has the most unbelievable produce, unlike anything I have seen anywhere. It's not, this is not even at the far, farmer's market, the quality of these vegetables and the taste and whatnot. Um, and the smell, the sulfur, they're really smelly and stinky. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, short of that, uh, most people are, don't have enough minerals in their body. And, um, and, and, because of the amount of chemicals in our environment, we've got 100,000 chemicals. Um, we have dozens of heavy metals that are being trudged up from the earth by industry so we can have our computers and all of our convenient products mm-hmm. and whatnot. Um, our bodies are being bombarded at such a rate. We are not evolutionarily designed to detox this amount of toxins and chemicals. Um, yeah, our bodies are designed to detox metals. I mean, ancient man was encountered small amounts of metals and things that are in the earth's crust. But now, like I said, they're being trudged up from the earth and they're, it's unlike anything before in human history. The body has not evolved to detox at this rate. And the chemicals, the body does not recognize and the liver does not know how to break down a lot of these chemicals so we have to help the body as much as we can to facilitate detox really good point about we're not caught up um just like people say stress you know we're not we're not caught up to deal with all the stress our ancient primal bodies um haven't evolved yet and we have all the stress so now it manifests itself in different uh diseases or or conditions or depression or you name it weight gain Mm -hmm. And so with toxicities or I, I guess the mineral um, deficiencies are still kind of a byproduct of this modern world we haven't caught up to yet. Yeah. So um, detoxification myths. This is one I wanted to get to because I know yeah. there's a lot of myths with detox. It's you walk into a drugstore and you buy a kit with Kim Kardashian on it and seven days later you're detoxed. Um, <laughs> describe us maybe some myths you see out there floating with the word detox. Yeah, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not into the master cleanse. Um, uh, you know, 10 days, not going to happen. It's not going to cut it. You know, 10 day detox in a box. That's Let's, like the lemonade one, right? The master yeah, cleanse. Yeah, lemonade. The I think pepper. People- yeah, exactly, exactly. And maple syrup. And I think people are so nutrient deficient. They can't afford to fast. They cannot, I, intermittent fasting is another whole other enchilada. Yeah. Um, but like going three days or 10 days without food, not a big fan of that at all. Um, once people have done a kind of a remineralizing detox program, sure, your body can handle a lot more stress mm-hmm. than it can. Um, but um, uh, unless you're in, uh, can handle a lot more stress and when you're not maybe as healthy as you could be. 
um, and other detox myths are it just um, it takes a long time to detox. You know, we have spent our entire lives accumulating uh, metals and chemicals that it really takes two to three years. And that's not popular, um, but it really takes a concentrated effort for two to three years to do something on a daily basis, doing taking supplements, taking uh, binders and chelators, uh, doing infrared saunas and other detox protocols to effectively detox your body. And then you have to do a maintenance program on top of that. And that's not popular. That's not really going to sell commercially to anyone, but that is the truth. And, um, so unfortunately you're not going to find, you know, uh, like I said, 10 day detox in a box really doing, uh, a, a lot of good. Okay. So that's a big myth that you can't just do a one and done detox. It's more of a process over a long period of time. Yeah. And you have to be vigilant because there's thousands of chemicals introduced in our environment every year with zero testing whatsoever. Um, and it's just, it's here to stay. Our environment's only going to become more and more toxic. So people really need to be cognizant of having a daily detox regimen they're adding, you know, to their health program. Hey guys, Clark here. 40%. That is the amount of DNA we share with fungi. In fact, lots of pharmaceutical drugs are made from mushrooms, such as penicillin. That's why Four Sigmatics has put together a mushroom blend, superfood drinks, so you can harness and tap into the power of mushrooms and fungi. I've been drinking their hot cocoa at night uh, with reishi mushroom, I believe it has. Really does uh, melt away the stress and the adaptogens can help go to the weakest part of your body and boost you up naturally. So head over to Four Sigmatic, that's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C dot com. Use use Paleo Hacks at checkout and save 15%. All right, back to the show. Okay, and so uh, what are some methods you can add in to detox? I mean, you mentioned infrared saunas. Um, That's something that comes up a lot on this call because I'm a huge fan of saunas. Um, Not an infrared one. I just go to LA Fitness and use their Mm -hmm. like 180 degree dry heat one. Yeah. Um, what's your research around saunas? Are they, they get the pass? Yay. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a bigger fan of the infrared saunas because Mm -hmm. the infrared rays penetrate your body several inches or centimeters and they heat you up from the inside out. So this is going to provide a much, uh, you know, a dramatically improved uh, detoxification results. Um, so that's really, really important. Um, they do a number of other things too. They activate heat shock proteins in your immune system. So that and they kill off, you know, infections in your body. A lot of people have like a lowered body temperature mm. um, because their thyroid's not working so hot because of mercury and other toxins. So they also kill off parasites and fungus, mold, um, bacterial gut dysbiosis. You name it, um, it's it's killing off any kind of pathogen in your body in the hard to reach areas like your brain and liver, where maybe some you know parasite cleanses aren't able to reach, or medications to clear out parasites. Um, the infrared saunas, uh, you know, they help bypass the liver. Most people's livers are really really overloaded, where they just don't function that well. So the infrared sauna bypasses the liver and. You know, you excrete a lot of your toxins through the skin. And not only that, it gives you amazing skin, too, which is really important. It's great. I I love it. And social. That's why I like the LA Fitness one. Uh, You can't get that in infrared one. I've seen those everywhere. Um, But I I like that you're going into some more benefits of the sauna. I've been trying to get uh, someone on here to talk about it, actually. So uh, just to touch a little bit more on this. You know, the the bro science, I guess you would say, behind saunas and what I hear, saunas are good because you drink water in and then you sweat it out. And it's just, you know, you're sweating out toxins, you're sweating, 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 sweating. But what you're see- saying, what I'm hearing, is that there's more benefits beyond just sweating that we don't really see, correct? Oh, absolutely. There are so many benefits to saunas. It's, you know, it, it and it feels good too. I just, I can't recommend it enough, whether it's a near infrared or far infrared, you know, just get into a sauna. What's, what's the difference between the near and far infrared? 
Well, they're just different wavelengths on the infrared spectrum. Mm -hmm. And so they're all beneficial. They all have different benefits, be it like weight loss or skin improvement or, uh, you know, cardio health or, you know, circulation, getting circulation going or lowering blood pressure, um, you know, or pain relief. You know, they all have different benefits uh, depending on the spectrum, but they're all good. You know, I personally use a near infrared sauna that employs bulbs. So they're near infrared bulbs. Um, there's also products uh, – that's a saunaspace.com sauna that I use. There's also products like Sunlighten that have near, mid, and far infrared rays hmm. um, within yeah, there. Yeah, they got all three. So, so they just have different benefits and some saunas will pulse – the infrared rays, which have different benefits in and of themselves. So I, I like the infrared saunas because, say, the sauna at your gym, that was like a Swedish or Finnish dry sauna, yeah. you can't stay in it that long. You know, it's 180 degrees, 200 degrees, you know, and that someone who's sick or has cancer or who's elderly, they can't do that. They can't tolerate it. I can barely tolerate it, and I love saunas. Um, you so, got to work your way up. Yeah, you got to work Talking your way up. Talking to an expert here, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm still pretty bad. I, I can 15 minutes and I'm, I got to get out of there. Yeah, you're toast. So yeah. you got to, you know, that's why I like the infrared saunas, far infrared sauna, you can stand a lot longer. Near infrared can go as low as 110 degrees. So that's great for someone who's infirm or very, very sick. They just can't tolerate it. So you think it's better to do longer at lower heat than shorter at higher heat? Um, it just depends on someone's tolerance. Uh -huh. Um, you know, yeah, you still get the benefits at a lower heat setting, say in the near infrared sauna. I can stay in mine for like an hour. Um, some people claim the benefits stop at about 20 minutes. So, you know, after that, maybe, perhaps you're not getting any more benefits. I don't personally believe that, but um, definitely I'm usually a fan of 30 minute minimum sessions okay. if it's tolerated. Not everyone can do that. Um are you familiar and can you explain to me the heat shock protein thing? I've, I've heard a little bit about that, but I kind of forget what it uh, exactly it does. Yes. Well, we have about 90 heat shock proteins in our immune system and they do various things in the body. It's just one component of the immune system that gets activated when we heat our body up. Huh. Um, so it's just a, another way if someone has cancer, if someone has certain health issues, uh, those heat shock proteins are very effective at um, helping the immune system to better protect you. Um, I wrote an article on my website about how infrared saunas kill cancer cells. Um, mm -hmm. At any given time, we have 100 million cancer cells in our body, you know, because different toxic metals will cause cells to not divide properly, namely cadmium. And um, when the cell doesn't, you know, divide properly, that mutated cell can then grow into a tumor. And if you have a healthy immune system or using an infrared sauna, it'll kill that it can kill that cell those cells or bundle of cells it's only when you are extremely mineral deficient and your immune system is too exhausted to function mm -hmm. that that mutated cells and allowed to grow into a tumor um so that's how infrared saunas will help to uh, to kill cancer and tumors so the heat shock proteins are already in your body and the sauna mm -hmm. activates them at high temperatures Exactly. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So it's not something you develop by sauna. It's something you activate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and those have benefits in particular to fighting off cancer and other disease and just strengthening your immune system or yeah you know i don't there's so many of them that do so many different things i don't know if i could really talk about at length on those sure. but i just i just know those are activated by the infrared sauna and beneficial on many different levels what's your sauna protocol if you were to just prescribe someone uh getting started with the sauna yeah i get asked this question a lot you know first heat up the sauna you know, you don't want to get in the sauna when it's cold and you have to stay in a long time. People are like, I'm not sweating. Well, it's not hot enough. <laughs> it's not so. working. <laughs> so you got to heat it up for, you know, 20 minutes first. Um, then I like to do stuff to, act, you know, get my lymph flowing because all uh -huh. the toxins get into your lymph. Everything's got to be flowing for that detox to happen. So I'll get a dry brush. Uh, which is kind of like a little back scratcher, shower, scrubber thing, and just brush my skin um, towards my heart and all over my body. Um, there's also, um, 
Uh, you can also take a bath right before to really heat up your your body or scrub your your skin down in the shower or bath. Um, then when I'm in the sauna, I'm drinking tons and tons and tons of water. A lot of times I'm craving coconut water, which is nature's Gatorade. It gives you lots of electrolytes. Nature's Gatorade. Uh, yeah, so I'm definitely downing coconut water afterwards. Um, so that's that's you know I've, actually you know after you're done sweating, you want to do that 50 yard dash to the shower because you want to rinse off all the toxins that you have worked so hard to excrete. So don't forget that part. <laughs> okay, so definitely shower after. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I, I guess that would make sense. It'd be kind of gross if you didn't just throw yeah, clothes. Yeah, yeah, little um, for those dirty birds out there. You yeah, shower. <laughs> Time wise, are you, are you saying 15, 20 minutes? Depends on heat, I guess, as we talked about. Yeah, it depends on where people are at with their health. You know, some of my clients can only do eight minutes, you know, but start out maybe 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. work your way up over a period of a month to maybe, you know, 30 or 45 minutes. But if you're feeling nauseated or lightheaded and time to get out, um, you know, the benefits Push of through it. They've stopped for you, <laughs> and you're mobilizing a lot of toxins. So, um, I'm very a big fan of taking binders like modified citrus pectin, um, namely Pectisol C. Uh, that is by you know Ecogenics. Uh, that is going to absorb all of these toxins that you're mobilizing. Because if you don't take hmm. binders that absorb all the toxins, they can deposit somewhere else or you can have symptoms. Hmm. A lot of people will get, you know, nausea, headaches, uh, fatigue, even anxiety, trouble sleeping. And because they're mobilizing all these things that can cause those symptoms. So very good idea to take five to 10 grams of modified citrus pectin per day um, away from supplements since it will absorb um, anything that, in your body. Um, so that's a very, very important part. What's of that called again? Sorry to cut you off. Modified yeah. Uh, Pectisol C, uh -huh. and it's just a modified citrus pectin, very natural product. Where does that come from? Like, is it a plant they extract? Yeah, just from the citrus peel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you heard of like putting uh, Himalayan salt in your water to add to minerals while you're in the sauna? I've heard some guys doing that. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Um, I tend to like the coconut water, just maybe it tastes a little bit better. But um, but you, whatever works, you know, I'm a big fan of heavily salting your food or, you know, putting it in the drinking water if you need to. Love the Himalayan or any other type of salt. I heard that conventional table salt has three minerals about. Yeah. And Himalayan salt and some of the higher sea salt grade has like 83. And yeah. I mean, it is night and day. Those are two different things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's why regular salt is so toxic to your body because it's a completely foreign substance. Himalayan salt or other sea salts match your body chemistry perfectly. And we, we need that. Um, I want to come back to brain fog. This is something mm -hmm. that's really fascinating to me, especially how it relates to heavy metals, because mm -hmm. I guess story time, I was in college and uh, having just severe brain fog so bad I had to take uh, coffee just nonstop. I mean, the baristas were judging me with how much coffee I was ordering. It was, <laughs> it was like the 24 ounce thing, Wendy, with three shots of espresso in there and they'd give it to me and they'd be like, you know, you're drinking seven cups of coffee and, <laughs> and then that little tone. And I'm like, okay, like, just give it to me. Yeah. The baristas <laughs> judging me here for my coffee habit. It's time to, <laughs> time to check. I need help. But it was because of the brain fog. I literally could not make it through a class um, without anything. And so I ordered this really expensive, because you got to get the best of the best, really expensive, like four ounce. Uh, it was supposed to be a detoxer for heavy metals, and you put it sublingually. I think it was like a dropper or something, mm -hmm. and it was $150. And two weeks later, I didn't feel any better. So I kind of like, like part of me has a little bit of a, pun intended, bitter taste with um, supplements and detoxing and heavy metals, probably just because, you know, it didn't work for me that one time. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. There's a question in there somewhere, but that's yeah. just kind of my experience with supplements. And yeah. Well, like the that. thing is, there is no magic pill. 
Okay, there is no magic pill to detox properly. And this is why I created my Mineral Power Program. You have to do diet. You have to do supplementation targeted to you, custom to you. You don't te- you don't guess. You have to test what nutrients you need. Zinc is great for some people, bad for others. Same for calcium. Uh, same for other iron. Um, what's poison to one is you know just amazing for the next person. They need that. Um, the next thing you have to do lifestyle correction. You have to do you have to reserve your energy for detoxification. It takes a lot of energy. You can't work out six days a week and expect magic detox results because you use up all your energy doing that. It's probably okay if you're young, but older people, not so good. Um, then you have to do detox protocols like infrared saunas. They dramatically facilitate detox and improve people's results. Um, so people have to take minerals. They have to take uh, chelators. They have to grab on the metals to detox them. They need specific ones for their metals. Um, and then you take binders like the modified citrus pack to absorb all this garbage. So it's there's no magic pill. You have to do kind of a comprehensive program like that. Okay, so that's that's probably where I went wrong. And I just took one supplement, not the whole like protocol. Yeah. And that's a lot of people, you know, they, they will do something for a month or two and they don't feel better. So they go on to something else, you know, but for me and doing my own program, I felt a little bit better within a few months after a year had a big difference. Hmm. Two years. I'm like, wow, I feel amazing. Um, after three years, four years, I was really soaring, but I'm still looking for more. I'm still looking for more, um, you know, brain functioning. I'm still looking for better health, more energy, and I think the sky's the limit. I mean, I just keep uh, improving, improving every year. Yeah, live to one ten, not just a hundred, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Had to bump it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm gonna plug in my computer because it's dying, but I want to hit on brain fog. Can you kind of set that up and and I guess what it is, what the person with brain fog would be feeling? Because this is a really um, important thing to to hit on. Well, brain fog can be caused by so many things. Um, definitely, a diet is one of them. If you're eating a ton of sugar, you're eating foods that you're sensitive to, you're eating lots of gluten. Um, these can definitely cause brain fog and fatigue. Um, if you have uh, certain chemical toxicities, I mean, it can be so complicated. There's thousands of chemicals. Those are obviously not contributing to health or brain functioning on many levels. Then there are certain toxic metals that are neurotoxins, namely aluminum. Um, this is my daughter was extremely aluminum toxic and was actually diagnosed with autism um, at about three years old. Hmm. Um, I detoxed her of her aluminum. She had huge amounts on every single hair mineral analysis. Now she's normal functioning. She's in a normal school and wow. totally wow. normal. Um, uh, mercury is another one. Mercury is extremely neurotoxic. Almost everyone has mercury toxicity. Mostly comes from fish. Uh, so anyone eating fish, you got mercury. Um, mm. Unless you're only eating the little fish, like the gross ones nobody wants to eat, like sardines, anchovies, mackerel, herring, or whatever your local little fish is. Um, even salmon, if you're eating salmon, you're still going to get mercury. So you have to be smart and you know and detox that. Um, just the selenium in the fish does not, will not detox the mercury. I've only tested three clients that have sufficient levels of selenium. Um, so people, I have almost every client needs to supplement selenium. Selenium, um, in addition to what they're getting from their fish. Um, so uh, those are some of the things that can cause brain fog. Definitely other metals indirectly can promote brain fog um, by uh, impairing adrenal functioning, by Im- which affect hormones production, um, by impairing thyroid function, lowering thyroid function, and that will cause people to have poor memory and brain fog. And very, it gets very complicated. So does b- brain fog, um, is it caused by a lack of blood flow to the brain and maybe some of these metals can interfere with the blood brain barrier or even cross them and kind of inhibit blood flow or is it oxygen or a mix of everything? I mean, I think it's a mix of everything. I mean, because our air is really, really polluted, there's definitely less oxygen in the air. I think most people can benefit from oxygen therapy. You know, I love hyperbaric oxygen chambers and a lot of people use ozone. Some people have ozonators in their saunas. 
I have some clients that do that. So high taking a food grade hydrogen peroxide baths. Mm -hmm. There's lots of different ways to get oxygen into your body, which I'm a big fan of. Um, but that's that's you know yet again another example of something that can promote brain fog if you're not exercising enough, not getting enough circulation. You know you're not you know that's going to affect uh, the brain functioning as well. So again, it goes back to diet lifestyle. Su proper supplementation and detox. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint one thing that causes yeah. it because a common theme on this show is that the body's not A plus B equals C. It's like A plus Z, Y, X, W, 2 to the power of 8 equals yeah. whatever <laughs> you might be feeling and then you got to go better. Um, so what was your brain fog protocol that made you feel awesome? I mean, you mentioned a lot of supplements, but just kind of break it down for us. Well, um, I had at one point I was I stopped going out with my friends because I I just couldn't think of words and and I thought, you know, at this point I was like thirty seven and I was like it's this can be from age this is not age related um, but I was I was having a real problem like holding conversations <laughs> it was really really bad. Did it start at thirty seven or was it a gradual build? Did you have it your whole life? Well, it really started, um, you know, when I was pregnant, you have typical mommy brain, but then my child was like two, I was like, you know, at, at some point I was like, this is this no longer mommy brain. This is my brain. That's just not working, you know? So, um, you know, w what I did was I first improved my diet. I dramatically improved my diet, started eating all organic, cooking all everything at home, um, felt better. Then I started taking a lot of supplements. But like a lot of you out there, I was just read an article on turmeric. Oh, I got to take that. And then yeah. I read an article on chlorella. Oh, I got to take that. And I was taking like 40 different supplements. You know, I was taking resveratrol. I'm really focusing on antioxidants more, uh, not minerals so much. I don't think I was taking hardly any minerals except in my multivitamin. Get a um, spreadsheet to check them all off for the day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so um, then I started detoxing. I started going to an infrared sauna um, a, a little bit. But then over the years, I developed my program called Mineral Power, and that's when I, I really began to make uh, strides in employing a hair mineral analysis to figure out the supplements that I needed. Um, and I did it like a Nutri-E valve too for the vitamins, but minerals I believe are more important. So when I began doing those, really felt a huge boost in my health and my, my sleep. Hmm. I slept deeper. Um, I got a better quality of sleep just with taking calcium and magnesium, which I desperately needed. And uh, that solved a, a big part of the brain functioning issue for me. Uh, but now i definitely a big fan of uh, magnesium theonate. Um, definitely put all my clients on this form of magnesium because it crosses the blood-brain barrier. Unlike other magnesiums, as, as we get older, magnesium, it's much harder for it to get into the brain. And so this is a specific um, kind of magnesium that feeds the brain. What was and it so called? Magnesium theonate? Theonate. Okay. Magnesium theonate. And so I prefer life extension neuromag. Uh -huh. um, that's what I take. And I take about 450 milligrams of that a day. You can take a little more if you want. Um, but that's just one form. I take five different forms of magnesium. Um, so that is, for me, a big thing. Um, but not only that, but detoxing these specific metals. Uh, my personal metal toxicities, I had a lot of them. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, like I said, everyone has a, like a custom protocol that they need um, to, to help clear, you know, all their toxins out. But just, you know, tending to diet, uh, custom supplements, mm -hmm. taking the Neuromag is great. Get, make sure you're getting enough sleep, getting a minimum like three times exercise a week, and infrared sauna is great too. You ever seen one of those foot detoxes where it like pulls out all the toxins and then the, the uh, bath is like sludge by the end? Yeah, the Onyx foot baths. Yeah, I'm a big fan of those. Yeah. Um, I was very skeptical at one point because I'm generally skeptical in nature. I'm like, oh, I have to see some research on that. Um, but uh, some very respected, uh, you know, natural cancer doctors that I refer any cancer patients to use those in mm -hmm. their cancer detox protocols. And they have amazing results and turning around like stage four cancer. So uh, I'm a big fan of this. I don't do them personally just because I do so much other stuff, but I, I do think those are legitimate way to detox. I saw them in like a mall kiosk. Yeah. Uh, 
I did it, and it was it was sludgy at the end. It was just this pool of you know there was stuff in there that was not there at the start, and so I I, I don't know if they added things when I wasn't looking possibly yeah. but uh i'm sure there's some things that do that i mean though the one these cancer doctors use are like eight hundred dollars so oh, yeah. they're all obviously you know a higher end model yeah. so to speak of that type of detox so to kind of wrap up tie a bow on it package it up um the conversation about brain fog if someone out there is having trouble they have a lot of symptoms of brain fog what are maybe two or three supplements um that they can take that would help them out yeah, well, what I put everyone on two supplements, Pectisol C mm-hmm. and Biocell. Um, we talked about Pectisol C, that's a modified citrus pectin. Even if you're not doing any type of detox protocol, this will absorb chemicals, it will absorb metals in your body. And people usually feel better within the hour of taking it, especially if they're having some bad symptoms that day. They're having anxiety or fat- brain fog or fatigue or nausea or whatever. Um, the Pectisol C really helps to absorb that. And my, as a result, my clients, they detox virtually symptom free. Um, as a result of taking this modified citrus pectin. And I, I've done testing with it where I do metal urine tests without it and metal urine tests with it. The Pectisol C test, there's nothing coming out hmm. because it's absorbing everything. It's incredibly effective. Whoa. The next one in so, that so, one. Sorry, yeah. Wendy, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but how much would you recommend of that? Yeah, I was just about to say that too. It's a five to 10 grams per day. Uh, When you're, you know, five grams is like a detox, you know, I'm sorry, a maintenance program. That's going to be one scoop of it or six capsules. And the 10 grams a day, you know, you want to take it in divided doses, maybe five grams in the morning with your coffee or tea, five grams in the morning, maybe before you go to bed. But it has to be taken away from food and supplements. So you got to kind of fit it in there within your supplement regimen, your eating regimen, kind of feed it in between, you know, your meals. Okay. Um, next one is Biosil. Uh-huh. This is very popularly, uh, you know, marketed as a hair, skin, and nail product. Um, it contains silica. So silica is something most people are deficient in, strengthens your hair, skin, and nails, and your bones. And what it does is it displaces and mobilizes these very metals that interfere in your body's ability to produce energy, that aluminum, arsenic, tin, thallium. It also detoxes cesium, which is a big problem with fish uh, in the Pacific as a result of Fukushima fallout. Yeah. Um, which there's definitely larger amounts of cesium in fish uh, in studies that have been done along the Pacific coast. The fish that are reaching the Pacific coast have higher cesium. Hmm. Um, it detoxes antimony as well. So a lot of other benefits just beside those metals. Um, so uh, very, very effective at mobilizing the, these metals. The, the pectisol can absorb them. So you want to take them together. And the biosil, you need about six, maybe 10 drops a day in a citric acid base like orange juice, pineapple juice, lemon juice, lime juice, because that helps the silica absorb better. And I like this particular brand of silica because it's attached to a choline molecule, making it much, much more effective for detoxification. So just any kind of silica, not going to do the plant-based silica is not strong enough. Um, so it's really just the bio cell that I stick to. But uh, you know, I don't want any of you guys out there getting cute and trying to do like 20 drops a day because you'll get really, really tired, especially if you're already tired because you're going to be detoxing too much of these metals that promote fatigue. So one day I took it twice on accident because I couldn't remember if I had taken it uh-huh. <laughs> that day. It wasn't a good day? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a good day. <laughs> I'm like, I need to do this. Uh, yeah. Five-hour <laughs> nap. Yeah, exactly. I was so tired the next day. Wow. So I definitely did not make that mistake again. So, you know, my point is slow and steady wins the race. You're not going to detox overnight. So you just have to do a little bit every day. Have you seen these in supplement stores like a, or Whole Foods or are these exclusively online? The Biosil is very popular. I mean, it's everywhere. It's pretty much on any online store. Um, I, I, the Biosil might be at Whole Foods. I mean, it's a pretty commercial product, okay. so it's available anywhere. The Pectisol C, not so much, but in, anywhere like iHerb and you know most of the major you know outlets are going to have it online. 
Awesome, Wendy. Thanks for that uh, little recommendations there. Um, I wanted to touch on, I know we're on time, but uh, this is a fascinating conversation. I'm having mm-hmm. a good time. Uh, you have a book coming out. You got yes. the, is it the Modern Paleo Detox Diet, correct? Yes. Did I get that yes. right? Yeah, if I can finish it, <laughs> I'm getting too detailed with it and Still tinkering on with it. it. Yeah. <laughs> tinkering with it forever. Um, but, you know, it, it just goes into everything I've talked about today the diet, lifestyle, detox, supplementation, just the whole, um, you know, uh, you know, gamut of everything you need to do to really drive home the point and importance that even if you live a healthy lifestyle and you eat great and you exercise and you sleep and you take some the best supplements and you take care of yourself, it's not enough. You have to have a daily detox strategy if you plan to live a long disease-free life, yeah, period. Absolutely. And so when can we expect the book out? Any uh, ETAs on it? No. <laughs> None? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but for right now, you can go to mineralpower.com and you can learn you know, all about my detox program if you want to get started on that. Okay, that's the best place to find you, mineralpower.com? Yeah, and I have a weekly podcast myself. I have mental toxicologists and all kinds of detox experts and paleo experts and all kinds of interesting guests on the show and um, also have a, a weekly blog. So lots of information there about toxicity and uh, all kinds of good information. Um, and where would they go for the podcast on iTunes? What's it called? It's called the Live to 110 podcast. Okay. And um, is there an episode they should start with? What's your kind of... Uh most hit song so to speak if you're a band what would be the one song yeah. um i really like the one that says uh hair mineral analysis versus urine metals tests mm-hmm. um i think that's a great one with a brilliant doctor dr bruce jones who's a partner of mine we're developing a hair mineral analysis certification program it'll be done in about 18 months but people can learn all about detox and how to read hair mineral analyses which is my love um i love the tool um so that's probably the the best one he's a great speaker so that'd be a good follow-up to this call then yeah yeah for sure wendy thank you so much for coming on um this is a fascinating show i think what you're doing is awesome you got a really cool niche um in the health community that not a lot of people i've seen or talked about um this is a great call i talked about saunas and brain fog which is fascinating stuff on here i've had experience with both so uh it was interesting cool conversation today thank you yeah thank you for having me what'd you think we convinced you to get a membership go to la fitness and take a sauna you should you should really try it out i love it social benefits too going to this banya five spot downtown in seattle never been um it's like a russian bathhouse one of the ones where they have cold plunges and really hot heat dry saunas uh, i'll probably be doing that tomorrow so i'll let you guys know how that goes paleohacks.com blogs articles recipes and our archives be sure you listen into previous shows I know they're outdated or they might not be as hip, but the information's timeless. It really is. I was going back through for the best of episode. If you haven't heard that, it's awesome. And listening to old shows and man, that information still holds up today. Start with the one with Joel Salatin. That was a year ago, I think. A really, really funny show about farming. I think you'd really like it. This week on my YouTube channel for the weekly Wednesday health hack, we're talking about rebounding. And it's called rebounding, not trampolining, because trampolining doesn't sound very nice. So rebounding is using a mini trampoline to stimulate your lymphatic system. And it's better for you than running, according to NASA. Um, Up to two times better for rehabilitating astronauts when they come back down, they get out, they can barely walk. And this is a good way they can increase their bone mineral density without the sort of Uh, ground reactive force that comes up when you're just pounding your feet on hard pavement. So you can actually use a rebounder or a mini trampoline to increase bone mineral density, stimulate your lymphatic system, and some people say it has other benefits outside of it. Um, So we're talking about that on the Weekly Wednesday Health Hack over at Clark Danger Fitness on YouTube. I think it's youtube.com slash user slash Clark Danger Fitness for that video. I'll try and post it in the show notes too, or just shoot me an email, clark at clarkdanger.com if you want that 
uh, full video. For Sigmatic, be sure to check it out. Coffee Mushroom. Mushroom Coffee is uh, the bomb. Love that stuff. I actually did just a packet the other day in my mouth without water, and it actually wasn't too bad. Thought it was going to taste a little different, like Top Ramen or something, those flavor packets, but um, it was great. It was fine, and it was quick, easy, and uh, I saw them in Whole Foods, too. If you're in your local Whole Foods, check them out, but use the code word PALEOHACKS, and you save, I think it's 10%, 15%, whatever, at uh, foursigmatic.com. All right, that's it, guys. I'll see you next Thursday. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great week.